Chapter 19 and verse number 7, we'll hurry and get into our lesson today. So good to see everybody on this uh, Sunday morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen? I'm not going to wait till tomorrow to rejoice, but I'm going to rejoice today. I'm not going to wait till next week. Amen? No matter what's going on in my world, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord today. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, because God has made this day, and I'm excited to be alive. I'm excited to be here with you wonderful people. We miss, of course, Pastor Engel being here, and, uh, but I'm so thankful to be able to be here today, and I give honor to him, and I will do more in, in the worship service. But let me get into the lesson, because our time is limited today uh, in our Sunday school. So Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor. Everybody say honor. honor. Give honor to him for the marriage of the Lord, the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. I want to um, speak for just a little bit in our lesson today, in our Sunday school portion of our service on one word, and that's honor. Honor. Amen. Let me just mention that honor is a two-way street. Honor is a two-way street. The word honor means to esteem, to give respect. Amen. If somebody is not respecting you, then it's hard to honor that individual. Amen. That's why a lot of marriages, let me just mention, it's not my... my, my um, uh, lesson today, but that's why a lot of marriages uh, mess up and get off course and get off track because, um, uh, you know, the, the Bible speaks of a woman to honor and respect her husband. Amen. And it talks about the man loving his wife. You won't ever find in Scripture where the Bible, of course, we understand that a woman is to love her husband, but you won't find where the Bible says for a woman to love her husband. But you'll find where it says the Bible says for a man to love his wife and for a woman to respect and honor her husband. But when a woman doesn't respect and honor her husband, then it's hard for a man to love his wife. And that's where it gets all out of guilt. But when it meshes together, when there's honor, when a woman will respect and honor her husband, then it's easy for a man to love his wife. Praise God. Praise God. And so honor is very, very Important, very important. Now, let me just mention a few things and in this lesson. Number one, the Lord has honored us in many ways, and I'm so thankful for that. And the first one I want to mention in Luke chapter 24 and verse number 45. He has honored us by opening our understanding to the Scriptures. The Bible said in Luke 24 and 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. I'm glad that we don't live in darkness, the Word of God. Amen. We have an understanding of the Scriptures. The Lord has opened our understanding and revealed some things to us, and we're honored by that. Amen. Amen. Especially we that sit here in the house of God today, we don't ever need to take one service for granted, but we need to be always thankful that we know the truth of God's Word. Amen. We have a pastor that preaches the Word of the Lord to us. Amen. And we have a good understanding of the Scriptures. That is, that is so important. So many people take uh, the Word of God so for granted, they just... It just flips around, and, and uh, they throw it here, throw it there. They don't ever open the pages. But I'm glad today that God has given us an understanding of the, the Scriptures so that we can be saved. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We don't have to be lost. If we're lost, it's on our own doing. We don't have to be lost because we have an understanding of the Scriptures. Now, the Lord has also honored us today by allowing us to repent of our sins. Praise God. Praise God. It was God that has drawn us to repentance. You didn't just make the decision by yourself. It's not a unilateral decision that you made on your own. No. The reason that you repented was because God drew you to repentance. 
And we're honored that the Lord has allowed us and given us a space to repent. John 6 and 44. The Bible said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. You don't just come on your own. Amen. The Lord draws you. Praise God. And it was the goodness of God that led you to repentance. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible said, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It has been the goodness of God that has led us to repentance. So we are, God has honored us today by allowing us to repent. And I am so thankful for that. Praise God. Praise God. Now, also, He has honored us by allowing our sins to be washed away in the waters of baptism. And uh, our favorite verse, Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, the removal of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so the Lord has honored us today by washing away our sins in His name. Acts 22 and 16, and this was Paul's testimony. And he said, now, why tarriest thou? As he's telling his testimony, he was saying what um, the man of God told him. Why tarry you, Paul? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What an honor to have your sins washed away. Praise God, praise God. And uh, it is a high honor to be able to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus um, and your sins removed as far as the east is from the west. And when you can figure out that distance, you come and let me know. Amen. Praise God. Because you're not going to figure out the distance from the east from the west. Amen, amen. Because once you start traveling east, you'll never know when you start traveling west. Praise God. You just go and go and go and go. And I'm thankful that our sins can be removed from us. They don't stay hanging over our head. What kind of God would that be just to keep our sins just over our head and, and uh, manipulating us with our sins? But that's not the kind of God that we serve. Amen. He's a gracious and merciful God. He's a good God. Amen. He wants us to be free from the bondage of sin. Now, here I go, getting all excited. I'm supposed to have Bible lesson this morning and be real quiet and cool. And, on, man, amen, amen. But, you know, anybody knows me, I just, I'm getting passionate about the Word of God and the things of God. Praise God. And so, I, I get excited about Jesus and what the Lord has done for me. Amen. And uh, now, not only has He honored us by allowing us to repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus. But he's also honored us today by filling us with his spirit. Wow, what an honor today to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Full of the spirit of God. Praise God. Now, in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And uh, brother Freddie can help us today put that on. And we'll read down through verse number 4. Acts 2. One through four, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them the utterance. Um, amen. Now I understand this was the Jews receiving uh, the Holy Ghost. But let's look in Acts chapter 2 verse 39. Acts chapter 2 verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Paul said the afar off 
is the Gentiles. And so the Lord didn't just fill the Jews with the Holy Ghost, but he said the Gentiles can have the Holy Ghost. So what an honor today to be able to have the Holy Ghost, to be able to have the Spirit of God living on the inside. Amen. If people could just comprehend and, and uh, you know, it's like, it's like uh, people want to argue about the Holy Ghost and they want to uh, say all kind of negative stuff about it. And uh, it's like somebody that's trying to tell me that uh, a flaming Young steak isn't any good, but they've never tried one. They've never eaten one. Yeah, right. Well, you can't tell me that flaming Young steak is bad if you've never put peace in your mouth. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I've tasted the flaming Young. And uh, if it's cooked right, amen, I'm telling you, it's a good steak. Praise God. It's a really good steak. And it tastes good. And uh, I've had some good ribeyes. Amen. And so um, uh, you got, you know what? You know what the Bible said? The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Amen. And when you taste uh, of the Lord's goodness and you taste of his mercy uh, and you taste of this Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you, you know it's real. You'll know it's powerful. You'll know how glorious it is. You'll know how awesome it is. Hey, it'll bring excitement to your life. Praise God, praise God. And so one of the world's highest honors for us today is for the Lord to choose us, to choose our body, our temple, to fill us with his spirit. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, the angel told Mary, you've been highly favored of God. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're highly favored of God today for the Lord to choose us, to fill us with his Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. amen. And I'm glad today. And so uh, when you embark on a new journey and you understand how powerful, how glorious is, how glorious the Holy Ghost is, you'll understand what an honor it is uh, to be filled with his spirit. Now, let me continue moving on. <clears throat> he has also honored us by giving us a pastor, a shepherd in our life. And uh, I'm thankful to have a pastor, a shepherd, a man, a man of God, a voice of God in my life. God has honored us. He's not left us just out here uh, just to try to figure it all out, but he's given us a pastor. And uh, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5 and 17, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And I know the pastor of this church labors in the word and doctrine because he was, he was raised under Bishop Johnny Goder who labored in word and doctrine. I was raised under Bishop Johnny Goder who labored in word and doctrine. And our pastor put word and doctrine into us. Amen, amen. amen. He drilled it into us. And uh, if you couldn't explain the oneness of God and explain uh, basic Bible doctrines, then don't even worry about getting in the pulpit. Yeah. Amen, amen. But he preached it, and uh, he preached it. And we got a hold of it as uh, ministers uh, sitting under, under Bishop. Amen. And, uh, and so I know the man of God. I know the shepherd of this house. Um, amen. Labors in word and doctrine. And the Bible said that a man that labors in word and doctrine is worthy to be counted of double honor. Yes. Now, I'll just give you my personal opinion of what double honor is. And uh, I think first honor is a hand clap. We clap our hands and we can say how much we love and appreciate uh, the man of God, I believe that's the first honor, but double honor is when we go into our pocket and we say, you know what? We're going to bless the man of God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go beyond just the hand clap, just beyond the verbiage, and we're going to bless and honor him uh, with our pocketbook. Praise God. And I'm not getting on that today, and uh, he probably would be upset with me. If I tried to push that. But I'm just telling you what I feel like double honor is. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so um, especially if the man of God labors in word and doctrine. But we're honored. The main thing is God has given us a man of God that preaches truth. Amen. Leads us in the path of righteousness. He's not a hireling. He's not yes. bought. You can't buy Pastor Engel. Praise God. He's not for sale. Amen. Right. He's got a backbone. 
Anybody that knows Pastor Engel knows that he's got a backbone. He preaches the Word of God. He teaches the Word of God. He stands for truth, amen, and uh, he, 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 he don't take it lighthearted. It's not, church is not casual with him. It's not just come and let's just eat donuts and drink coffee and just shake hands and hug necks. No, that's not what church is about with Pastor Engel. Amen. amen, amen. But he preaches truth because your soul is at stake. Your family, amen, is at stake. And so he wants to make sure that you are ready for the coming of the Lord, for the rapture. When the Lord comes back for his church, he wants to make sure that you're ready to go. Praise God. And so we need to always be thankful that the Lord has given us a man of God. And there's a lot of preachers in pulpits today, and I don't want to be negative about the pulpit, but there are a lot of preachers in pulpits that are watering it down. They're in it for the money. And uh, they're in it for the crowd, and, and uh, they're in it for the pat on the back, and, and they're in it for the fame, amen. But that's not the heart of Pastor Ingle, I can tell you that. Praise God. He preaches truth, and we're thankful for that. Also, we're honored today. The Lord has honored us by giving us a revelation of who He is. Man, I'm glad to know who Jesus is today. We're not in darkness about that. Praise God. We know exactly who Jesus is. And there was a lot of people, and there is a lot of people in our world that's confused. They, they don't have an understanding of who Jesus is. But we got a revelation today, the same revelation that God gave Peter, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17. Amen. Let's, I tell you what, let's go, let's read verse 16 first, Brother Freddie. Let's do that. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of Of the living God. He had a revelation. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Hath revealed who he is. And we understand that there's only one Lord today. And the Bible, Paul said, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We understand Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's not two lords or three. Amen. And when Paul was smitten on the Damascus road and, and uh, there was a light that came down from heaven, he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Jehovah? The Jehovah of the Old Testament. Um, amen. He knew that voice and he understood. Um, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Um, and up until that point, Paul didn't have a revelation of who uh, Jesus was. Um, and he was persecuting people uh, because he thought that Jesus, uh, uh, the followers of Jesus were blasphemous and, and all of this and that and, and he was persecuting the church um, but he got a revelation that day of who Jesus was. Um, I'm glad to know that Jesus is God today. Hallelujah, Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I and my Father are one. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 3, 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He was revealed in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. God revealed himself. Amen. And uh, uh, through the manifestation of, of Jesus Christ. And so we're thankful today that we have a revelation of who God is, who Jesus is today. We're not confused about that. Praise God. Now I can stay on that a long time because that subject is deep in my spirit. But we got to move on. Praise God. Everybody say move on. Praise God. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. Now number seven. Number seven. The Lord has honored us today by guiding us into all truth. We don't just have some truth, but we got all truth today. Let me tell you something. You're sitting in a good place today. You can be saved from from this church. I'm telling you, you can make it to heaven from this church. You can hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm not just about right on that. I tell you, I'm very confident today. That you can make it to heaven, amen, from this assembly. I'm telling you today, hallelujah. The Lord has guided us into all truth and your pastor preaches all truth. Amen. John 16 and 13. The Bible said, how be it when he, 
the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. I'm glad the Lord has not left us in a dark place, a dark spot, but he has guided us into all truth. Amen. Now, also, the Lord has honored us today by providing healing for us, delivering us, amen, blessing us over and over again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. The Lord has provided healing for our bodies. Anybody ever been healed? Amen. Every hand should go up in this house. If you've ever had a fevered brow and, and uh, you feel uh, f- felt well, you've been healed. Praise God. Praise God. Never had a migraine. And uh, healing isn't always about just uh, some major disease. But I'm telling you, I've had migraines. And wanted just to be in a dark room, in a cold place, and just a uh, uh, cold washcloth over your face. And, and uh, you, boy, you didn't want any light touching your eyes. And, and to be able to get up from that and, and be healed of that migraine. Amen. To have maybe some back pain or, or, or something happening. And the Lord reach down and heal you. Praise God. Praise God. That is something special. It's awesome to be healed of, of Almighty God. Amen. My uh, pastor, well, actually, he's an evangelist friend of mine. And uh, there was a pastor that was suffering, uh, uh, suffering some uh, major issues in his, in his body. Amen. And uh, he had gone to the doctor. And this evangelist was telling me last night, we was talking late last night on the phone, and he said he felt to just get the bottle of oil and pray for this pastor. He said, you're constantly praying for everybody else. And he said, I just believe that God can heal you, and, and God can, can touch you and, and give you healing in your body. And, and so um, uh, this pastor was facing major, uh, major surgery. And, and so uh, my evangelist friend went, prayed for him, and prayed healing upon him, and, and prayed that God would touch him. And, and so so this uh, uh, pastor went to the doctor um, uh, that Monday, um, and when he got to the doctor, um, uh, the doctor said after doing more x-ray and this and MRI, and, and they did all kind of tests, um, he said, uh, sir, he said, I don't know why you're here. He said, uh, the x-ray, the previous x-ray showed uh, uh, that you needed major surgery. Um, he said, but now, he said, the x-rays don't show any issue, no problem. He said, we can't find any problem. That's the kind of God... Um, that we serve. He's a God that can heal, a God that can bless. Amen. And we're honored to serve that kind of God today. Hallelujah. 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 He's a God that can supply all of our needs, not our wants. I know you may want a million dollars today and you may want a a new Mercedes, but um, uh, sometimes we don't need those things. But God can help us with putting food on our table. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Yeah, man, God can provide our need over and over and over. God has uh, supplied our need. And uh, this is just a little humorous, uh, humorous moment. God has been, he'd been coming through um, and, and supplying our need. Of course, we own a mattress store and, and uh, God has been, he's been blessing. But uh, in the mattress business, you'll go, it's ups and downs. And, uh, and so uh, just recently, uh, we were praying, and, and I said, God, you, you know what we have need of. And, and uh, it was almost the last day of every time that a uh, bill was due or this, uh, the Lord would come through. And finally, one day, I was just praying. I said, Lord, you know, I'm thankful you have met every need that we've had, and you've blessed us over and over. But would you mind, if, if you don't mind, would you uh, at some point... Just give us a little bit of cushion, praise God, just so we're not worried, worried to the last second of every, every month. Amen. But uh, the Lord will supply our needs. He's going to take care of us. Praise God. And it's in those times when, uh, when it is to the, to the very, uh, maybe the last, the last day or when the bill's due and he comes through, it just builds our faith. 
Amen. It just, it just helps us. Um, and sometimes we need those times. I'm not being negative of that. But we do know that the Lord will supply our need. The Bible said in Philippians 4, 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He's a God that will supply our need. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is he honors by protecting and defending us. The Lord's our protector. The Lord's our defender. Let's go to Psalms chapter 18, verse 48. Psalms 18 and 48, and then I want us to go to Psalms 34 and 7. But Psalms chapter 18 and 48, the Bible said, He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Boy, that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Amen. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. I'm telling you, sometimes men are unmerciful. Mankind is unmerciful and unkind with their actions and their words and things they say and how they treat people. But I'm telling you, God can lift us up above all of that. God can raise us up above that and deliver us from the violent man. He's our protector. You put him first. You seek him first. I'm telling you, he'll protect you and he will defend you. Amen. Psalms 34 and 7. Psalms chapter 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Deliver them. Just the other night, uh, we had gone um, into uh, the big city of Durham. Now, we live in South Boston, Virginia, and uh, boy, I'm going to tell you, traffic comes and goes, and you can walk the streets, and it's just uh, it's, it's, it's laid back living in South Boston. We love it. Everybody pretty much knows everybody, and uh, matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> We were leaving the store the other night, our mattress store, and my mother, uh, uh, she was leaving the same time we were, and she had to walk down this little, this little alleyway and, uh, uh, to get to her car. And I said, Mom, uh, let me or one of the kids walk with you. No, 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 I'm not scared. I can walk to the car. I'm not fearful. I'm not afraid. And uh, I'm a big girl, praise God. And so uh, she took off, and, and she took off walking to the car. But now, in uh, maybe the big city of Durham, you probably wouldn't do that down an alleyway. Um, because it's, of course, a bigger city, and uh, there's some crime there, um, and uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of sin that's running, running rampant in some of our bigger cities. And, boy, it burns my heart. Amen. It disturbs me. And uh, <clears throat> we need to pray for these cities. Amen. That God would protect and bless and help. Amen, amen, and, and I, I commend pastors that will go into these cities and build churches, praise God, and uh, I'm glad that God has called me to a small town, amen, amen, I'm, I'm thankful, thankful for that, that's where I fit, and I feel, I feel at home there, um, <clears throat> but uh, the, the other night we were in Durham, and, and uh, we were turning on to Interstate 40 on the, uh, on the own ramp, there was a truck that man, he, he was going about, he was going way too fast. And, and uh, he realized when he was turning beside us that he was about to hit us. And uh, we just looked over there and I saw a truck coming right to my son's door. And the only thing we could say was Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, when we said Jesus, something happened. He took and, uh, and he overcorrected, which I wish he wouldn't have done that, but he overcorrected the truck. And went up over the guardrail, busted, busted his truck up. And uh, where we were at on Interstate 40, it was, it was dark. It was very dark. And uh, I had me and my family there. It was just me, my wife, and my youngest son. We were just a little bit fearful. Brother Bill. It, just, it, was, it, was, it was not just a, it wasn't a good situation. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know who was in the truck, what was going to take place. And I told my wife, I said, we're going to sit right here. Of course, we weren't. He didn't hit us. There was no damage to our vehicle. I believe the Lord put some angels, amen, around our vehicle. And kept the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. Amen, amen. And uh, the Lord, 
the Lord protected us, and uh, we saw uh, the individual get on uh, the phone. We're thankful that he was okay. We're so thankful. But uh, we were still uh, nervous about that. And uh, we're thankful that uh, law enforcement came and, uh, and everything was fine. And they told us, they thanked us, and even the family thanked us uh, for staying and waiting and making sure everything was okay. And then we were able to, uh, to move on out, praise God. But I'm, I'm so thankful. That could have been a disastrous situation. That could have been a very bad situation, and uh, on, uh, even on our behalf. But we're thankful that the Lord protected us. I'm telling you, it pays to fear the Lord. It pays to be prayed up. Amen. It pays to serve God and do the will of God. Stay in touch with God. Amen. Don't just call on Him when you need something, but amen. Morning, noon, and night. Call upon the name of the Lord. Put God first. Amen. Let Him know He's number one in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. He's not number two or number three, but He's number one. He's first place. Amen. And when you call on Him when you're in trouble, He'll be right there. He's quick to come running. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You look just in the natural. You look in the natural. Man, you got somebody that don't pay any attention to you and you want to be a blessing. You want to help, but man, they don't ever call you. They don't they don't ever uh, text you. They don't ever want anything to do with you. Um, uh, they, 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 they go in the opposite direction. Um, but then when they're in trouble, they want to call. And yes, um, uh, you may go to the rescue, but you're just a little bit reluctant. You're just a little bit hesitant. Why do they only call when they need something? Amen. But you put, let somebody call you on a daily basis, tell you they love you. You let somebody text you. You let somebody say, hey, daddy, mommy, I, I'm so appreciative of you. You let, you let some, a friend uh, call you and text you um, uh, on a daily basis or maybe two or three times a week. Hey, say, man, I'm just checking on you. Make sure you're all right. Just tell you I love you, appreciate you as a friend, whatever. You let, you let that kind of friend be in trouble and need something. You quick. To, hey, whatever you need, I'm here. Amen. And I believe the Lord is very quick to respond to us when we put him first, when we seek first the kingdom of God and we do his will. Amen. Amen. The Lord is quick to help us. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I got to hurry. Honor, I mentioned at the very beginning, is a two way street. Honor is a two way street. Now, I told you this morning how the Lord has honored us in many ways. And God focuses on honor in uh, the scripture. 1 Timothy 1 and 17. 1 Timothy 1 and 17. The Bible said, now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is well pleased when those that he's honored will choose to honor him in return. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't want the Lord to honor me with truth, with the word. He's preserved his word. He didn't have to do that. But God has preserved his word. They've tried to burn it. They've tried to take it and, uh, and, and, and keep it from us. Um, you go on back and you study your history and they've done everything they can. But I'm telling you the word of God has been preserved and it's still here. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is still flowing. The Holy Ghost is still being poured out. Amen. You can still repent. And you can still be baptized. You can still be healed. You can still be blessed. God has honored us in so many ways. But I'm telling you, honor is a two-way street. We don't need the Lord to honor us with all that He's honored us with and then ignore Him. But we need to honor Him in return. Praise God. Exodus 20 and 12, the Lord tells, he tells children to honor their father and mother. Honor. The Lord talks about honor. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth. Amen. The first commandment with promise in the scripture. And then he tells us to honor the seniors and show respect. Leviticus 19 and 32, thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. And honor the face of the old man. I'm not being disrespectful today. I'm giving you the word of God. Amen. And 
Fear thy God, I am the Lord. Honor the elders. Amen, amen, amen. amen. If somebody is your senior, you need to honor them. Praise God. Praise God. That's just, that's, that's biblical. It's the right thing to do. Amen. To show respect. Praise God. And to honor them. My father just turned uh, 80. Amen. And uh, we, uh, we just had a celebration and we just, we just honored him uh, the other night uh, for a little, little birthday party. And I wanted him to know uh, how much we loved him and appreciated him. Praise God. And uh, we wanted to do that. It didn't matter how much I had to spend on dad. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. Praise God. Because I wanted him to know how much I appreciated him, how much I loved him. He has been there for me as a dad. And so I was so thankful to be able to honor him in return. Praise God. And so we need to honor uh, the elders. Praise God. Now, uh, let me move on. The Bible tells us to honor the widows. 1 Timothy 5 and 3, the Bible said, honor the widows that are widows indeed. Praise God. Even the Old Testament They had to honor the widows. And coming on in, Paul tells us over and over to honor the widows. That is, that's the right thing to do. Praise God. And uh, my uh, mother-in-law is a widow. And I'll never forget, uh, several years ago, my father-in-law passed away in February of 2018. And uh, and, and, uh, we went out to eat shortly thereafter. Uh, that my father-in-law had passed away, and, and uh, I got the check, and my mother-in-law, uh, she said, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm fixing to pay the bill. She said, no, you're not paying for mine. I said, you want me to dishonor God? Right. Talk about it. She said, well, I can't argue with that, praise God. I shut that down real quick. And so if my mother-in-law is with us and we go out to eat, she knows not to touch the check. We're paying because we're going to honor the widow. Amen. Amen. Because it's biblical. It's the right thing to do. Amen. And so um, the Bible talks about honor the Lord with praise and worship. Remember, honor is a two-way street today. Psalm Psalm 71, verse 8, sorry. Psalm 71, verse 8. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. We are to honor the Lord with praise and worship. God requires that you honor Him with more than just words. Amen. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw uh, near me with their mouth um, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Amen. He said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Matthew 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God is looking for more than just lip service. Amen. We got a lot of people in our world, a lot of religious people. They say they love God, but when do they talk to him? They say they love God, but when's the last time they've darkened the door of the house of God? Amen. They say they're a Christian, but are they Christ? Christian means Christ-like. Amen. Amen. Are they trying to be like Christ? Are they trying to uh, live for Him and serve Him and do His will? And so it's got to be more than just lip service. We've got to honor Him with our actions. Um, Praise God. Um, Our lifestyle should honor Him. Um, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, um, which is in you, um, which ye have of God, and ye're not your own. Um, And then in verse 20, for you are bought with a price, um, therefore glorify God, or that word is honor God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we're to honor God. With our bodies, with our conduct, with our spirit. Praise God. Amen. When you're at Walmart and the line's not moving as quickly as you want it to move, you're honoring God when you've got just a little bit of patience. Yeah. Right. 
and you don't start saying things and getting angry and throwing things and, and, uh, and just slamming the cart around. Yes. Amen. That's not honoring God. That's right. But you're honoring God when you're a little bit patient. Put a little smile. Yeah. Say a word of kindness. Yeah. Show some love. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A lady just recently, <clears throat> we were there in the checkout line, and, and, uh, and she said, I am so sorry. Um, and she said, I, I apologize. Just take. I said, ma'am. Listen, I said, you know, if I get angry over something so trivial as waiting in this line, I said, I got major problems. I said, we need a little bit more kindness, a little bit more love, and a little bit more patience in our world. Praise God. Praise God. And we honor God when we show some kindness and we got a spirit of love. Amen. We do the right thing. We honor the Lord when we're faithful to the house of God. The Bible said in Psalms 26 and 8, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord's honor is in this house. And we need to honor him by being in the house of of God. Um, amen. Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. We honor the Lord when we love our brethren. When we love each other. And we prefer um, our brethren. Praise God. We're honoring God. Um, it's so very important. Um, and uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. Um, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. Um, in sanctification. Um, and honor um, when there's moral purity and separation from the world um, that honors the Lord. Um, we honor Him when we pray. Amen. We honor Him when we're reaching for the lost. And I'm closing. Um, we honor Him in service um, uh, when we do things for the kingdom of God. When we cut the church yard, vacuum um, the carpet. Um, and we don't ever need to get too good for to do anything around the house of God. Um, amen. But we honor the Lord um, when we have service um, uh, in the house of God and for the kingdom of God. Um, we honor the Lord when we manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Um, we honor Him by putting Him first. Um, we honor Him when we uh, uh, let our steps be directed um, by the Lord. Um, and when we include Him um, in our decision making. And we don't say, I'm three times seven, I'm 21, I'll do my own thing. I'll I'll do it how I want to do it. But we honor the Lord when we say, Lord, this is a major decision and I need your help. I need your direction. I need your strength. Guide me and lead me and direct me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand, please. Amen. This is my last scripture. Now, I got a lot more, but I'm going to stop right here. But I do want to give this scripture. We need to be a vessel of honor, not a vessel of dishonor. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.20 but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. 2 Timothy 2.21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Let's love him right now. Can we do that? Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Oh, let's honor the Lord today and give him praise in this house. We honor you, Lord. We love you and magnify your name and exalt you, Lord Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We want it to be more than just lip service, but with our actions, we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I believe there's about a 10-minute break or so. Is that, am I right on that? Praise God, and uh, we'll come back at 11 o'clock. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Use the restroom if you need to. Get a drink of water. Thank you, Jesus.